Hey, um, I'm David, coordinator of the Maths Learning Centre. I did a revision seminar the other day for Differential Equations 2 and um, the video was corrupted and some of the stuff I did I thought was really good and I'd like to do a couple of examples of doing bifurcation diagrams um, now as an extra bonus so that I can replace some of the things I did in that seminar. All right. So here's my example that I've pulled out um, of something that somebody sent me. Sketch a bifurcation diagram for the following ODE with parameter beta, indicating where the, vertical, where the critical points are stable and unstable. Find the points where bifurcation occurs. And that's dx on dt is beta x minus 4x cubed. So just as a recap, um, a bifurcation diagram is a collection of all of the possible phase diagrams that go with all the different values of beta. And so in my head, I'm thinking that given a particular value of beta, I would draw a phase diagram of all the values of x, and there would be some critical points maybe that go with it. Um, and they'd be stable or unstable based on calculating um, whether the d on d, dx on dt was positive or negative in a particular zone. And then for another value of beta, maybe there'll be different critical points. And for another value of b, maybe there'll be different critical points. And another value of beta, maybe there'll be different critical points. And then all of those together um, would create, oops, sorry, some sort of diagram like this, where these are the values of beta and these are the x's and it all works out like that. And if over here it was, um, if over here the uh, dx into t was positive up here, which means on my phase diagram from mass 1b, it was going up here and maybe down here and maybe up here, this one would be unstable and this one would be stable. And so I'd get something going on like this and do dotted lines for unstables and, and solid lines for stables. And that's the sort of thing I'm imagining that I have to do. Okay, so um, there are two ways to decide what's going on at this point. I can either do like a sign diagram and figure out whether dx and dt is positive or negative on either side, um, or I can do the derivative at this spot, and if that derivative um, of if that derivative on the x on dt with respect to x uh, is uh, positive, then it will be going from negative on one side to positive on the other, and therefore it will be doing this diagram. But if the derivative is negative, it will be going from positive on one side to negative on the other, and that would be um, what the arrow is pointing inwards. So <clears throat> that's what I'm going to do with this thing here. And um, this, these lines are the places where dx on dt is zero um, for different x's and different betas. So I need to, to figure out where those lines are. I have to solve for when this is equal to zero because they are the critical points for the various betas and x's. So critical points for any specific beta um, occur when dx on dt is zero, which means that beta x minus 4x cubed is zero. And so this is an equation that talks about, um, this is an equation that I can use to figure out um, how this graph looks with beta on this side and x on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I can see there's an x in both of them. So I'm gonna factorize that out. And so either x equals zero or beta minus 4x squared is equal to zero. And that would mean that beta is 4x squared. So both of these lines are going to occur on my diagram. And so I'm gonna draw them both. So here's x, no, not x, here's beta and here's x. And x equals zero is this line. 
and beta equals 4x squared, well, if it was y equals 4x squared, that would be a parabola. And a parabola um, on the y-axis uh, would look like that, right? But positive beta is over here, and so I've got a parabola pointing sideways. 4x squared um, is much slopier than x squared, so it's going to look something like that. So this is my diagram of all of the critical points. It looks to me like this is going to be a, um, a bifurcation point because as I move along this way, the number of um, critical points changes. So what this is doing is that if I'm over here, I can locate a phase diagram at any particular location and it will have certain critical points. Over on this side, there's a critical point here. Um, it could be stable or unstable, or possibly semi-stable. Over here, there's three of them. And what would happen is, if dx on dt was positive on this side and negative on this side, the arrows would be pointing up and down, and that would be unstable. But if it was dx on dt was negative this side and positive this side, then it would be pointing inwards, and this would be stable. So what I can actually do is make a giant two-dimensional sign diagram. I know that as I move around this, um, this diagram, the value of dx and dt will change to various different things, but it's only zero on these blue lines. So if I switch from one spot to another, the, um, if I go across the blue line, it should switch from positive to negative. That's what I'm um, thinking about. So I actually have four regions, this one here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. And if I could find a point in each of those regions and sub it in, it would tell me whether dx on dt was positive or negative in those regions. So at the point uh, x equals beta equals 0, x equals 1, that's this point here, dx on dt is 0 times 1 minus 4 times 1 cubed, which is negative. And so everything is negative up here. I'm actually going to draw a whole new diagram so that it's easier to see how it happened. So it's negative up here. That's the value of x and t is negative up here. And at the point down here, at beta equals 0, x equals minus 1, dx on dt would be 0 times minus 1 minus 4 times minus 1 cubed. And minus 1 cubed is negative times a negative number. That's positive. And so it's positive here. So I now know that if I put a phase line here, it's negative here, which means that it's the, that x is going downwards, and it's positive here, which means x is going upwards. So this is stable, all the points on this line. I need to know what's going on in between here, so I need to pick points that are in this zone. I don't really know um, how quickly this moves. So um, if beta is 4x squared, um, if x is 1, um, I would need to pick beta to be um, something bigger than 4, so 1, 5 maybe, and one, uh, minus 1, 5 would do the trick. So I haven't got room for it here, so I'll just keep going. At beta equals um, 5, x equals minus, x equals 1, I get dx on dt equals 5 times 1 minus 4 times 1 cubed, which is positive. And at beta equals 5, x equals minus 1, dx on dt equals 5 times minus 1 minus 4 times minus 1 cubed. So that's negative 5, that's plus 4, that's negative and so I get this sign diagram for all of the places uh, where 
um, these are the values of dx on dt. So over here, um, dx and t is negative, so the arrow is pointing down. Over here, it's pointing up. In fact, I might even put those arrows in just to make sure that I understand how they work. I'll draw another line on here. So this side, I've got an arrow pointing down because it's negative up here, and an arrow pointing up. That makes this point a stable point. And over this side, I've got an arrow pointing down here and up here and down here and up here because this entire region is positive. And so because of that, these must be stable. These are stable, these are stable, that's unstable. And so my final diagram is this. Stable, 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 unstable. That is my um, beautiful sign diagram. Um, um, uh, what's it called? A bifurcation diagram. So it looks like the only point where things um, are dodgy is here at zero. Just to be absolutely official, I know that the, the uh, bifurcation points will happen when the derivative of dx and dt with respect to x is zero. So dx and dt is beta x minus 4x cubed, which I'm going to call f of x and beta. And f sub x is beta minus 12x squared. And at a bifurcation point, this would be 0. So the beta will be 12x squared. But we also know that at a bifurcation point, either x equals 0 or beta is 4x squared. So if x equals 0, we get beta equals 12x squared, which is 12 times 0 squared, which is 0. And or if uh, beta equals 4x squared, uh, we get uh, beta is also 12x squared, and so we get um, that 4x squared equals 12x squared, so x squared is 3x squared, and so 0 is 2x squared, and so therefore x is 0. Okay, cool. So either way, um, we get that x is 0, um, and that therefore if x is 0, then beta is also 0. Okay, and so um, the only bifurcation point is x equals 0, beta equals 0. Right, one last moment for making a decision about this. I just want to say something more about this. There is an alternative way of figuring out what to do uh, with that um, diagram, and I just want to do um, a do that. Okay, so alternative is that I have already figured out where the um, critical points are, which is this. Like that. And this was b dero equals 4x squared, and this was x equals 0. But what I can also do is I know that bifurcation points, I know that um, critical points will be um, stable if the derivative of d dx and dt with respect to x is um, positive. Um, and they'll be unstable if the derivative with respect to x is negative. So, so f of x and beta was dx on dt, which was beta minus uh, beta x minus 4x cubed, and f sub x was beta minus 
12 x squared. Okay, so if that derivative is negative, then you're, as you cross this line, you're going from um, you're going from a positive to a negative, and so that would be stable. And so stable when um, this is a negative number, which means beta is less than 12x squared. And beta equals 12x squared is a parabola as well. So I'm going to draw that on my diagram. And that parabola is higher up than this one. If I want to be beta to be less than 12x squared, that would be down here. That's where beta is less than 12x squared. And any critical point that has beta is less than 12x squared will have this derivative being less than zero and therefore will be stable. So all of the critical points in this green zone are stable. And so I can now redraw my picture like this. So all of the one critical points, which is the blue points inside that green zone, they are all stable. And all the ones outside the green zone, which is this bit, are unstable. So that is an alternative way of coming up um, with the answer. Well, I hope that was helpful um, and I'll see you around.